Hello everybody, my name is Michael. My name is Vyacheslav. And our project is real-time SCMG recognition for remote control of personal devices and IoT. To begin, our project is aimed at creating an interface between SCMG sensors and personal devices, such as personal laptops and computers. We are going to present a novel set of gestures that are both convenient and natural such that it mimics typing motions and are potentially recognizable with our hardware. We are also going to present a classification algorithm for differentiating our gesture set and showing its performance through an Android application. To begin, EMG, or electromyogram, is an electrical signal produced through the contraction of muscle cells. SEMG is surface, S surface EMG that is measured from the skin. There are a variety of devices that can capture the signal. However, traditional methods of SEMG signal collection employ a lot of wires and require special preparation to operate. This makes it too cumbersome to set up and use on a daily basis. On the other hand, portable devices like the Mile armband, while less accurate, are much more convenient to use. Regardless, they, like po they lack popularity with the general public. One of the reasons is that the number of gestures that can be reliably recognized by this hardware remains limited. Our work aims to build upon that and propose a real-time classification algorithm on a novel gesture set. Previous works in this field commonly employ a common gesture set. This gesture set utilizes a whole hand to produce, to, to produce dissimilar SMB signals with a large amplitude. Examples include open hand, wrist flexion, clenched hand, and wrist extensions. Decently studied finger movements include a large sweep of the fingers to produce a similarly large SCMD signals. These gestures can be reliably classified at real-time rate using various neural network architectures and features. Tested architectures include CNN, ANN, LDA, and others. Features can vary between a time domain, frequency domain, a mixture of both, or neither. One of the most important works we came across was the Nina Pro EMG database. It was captured with two mile armbands and a cyber glove. While the Nina Pro database contains a large amount of information, ranging over 53 gestures, it still does not capture our, data, our gesture set. To clarify, the left image demonstrates gestures that produce a large SCMG signal and are easily differentiable. A sample from the Nina Pro database gestures can be seen in the middle. While there are large sweeps of the finger accounted for through finger adductions, finger extensions, and finger flexions, taps and subtle gestures of the finger are not seen. Therefore, we will be focusing on a unique gesture set that consists of convenient and natural movements. Firstly, our Maya armband was placed at this specific position on the forearm throughout both data collection and interfacing. After initial test, the Maya armband was seen to gather the maximal SCMG signals from this location. Additionally, within our design, the Maya armband was placed on the left arm. Here you can see a short animation of what our gestures look like. On the left, the tap can be seen to represent a simple keyboard press, while the extension can be seen to represent the movement required to reach other keys. For these gestures, we collected a dataset of almost 80,000 samples. Though, final dataset which we used to train our neural network was only 30,000 samples. To process them in real time, we use sliding window approach. That is, we divide all our data in segments of fixed size. A set of segments is combined into a window, and six time domain features are extracted from the window. Then, first segment is popped out of the window, and the new one is added uh, at the end. Features are extracted again, and this process runs in a loop until last window is processed. Features that we use include mean average value, root mean square, slope sign change, wavelengths, activity and mobility HP parameters. Feature extraction algorithm described in previous slide was applied to manually classified data, and re resulting feature vectors were fed into our neural network. Our, our neural network consisted of input layer, hidden layer with a sigmoid function, and output layer with softmax activation function. During real-time operation, output of classification algorithm was stored in an array of fixed lengths. When array is full and the a new input comes in, the first element of the array is popped out and the new one is appended. If number of occurrences for some gesture exceed the threshold, we print a, a responding symbol. This is made to filter out noise, and thresholds uh, values were set individually for each gesture. 
The array was chosen to be 60 samples long, based on the trade-off between type and speed and accuracy. Above-mentioned classification algorithm was implemented as a part of an Android application. This application had three activities with parent activity called main menu and child activities called scan and keyboard. Scan activity allowed the user to establish Bluetooth low energy connection with MyoBand device. Connection itself if, uh, is supported by singleton object called uh, MyoBand device, which is shared among all these three activities. Keyboard activity sets my armband to correct mode using a Myo command list helper class and acquires MG data from MyoBand device. This data is processed using feature processor helper class and then classified. To summarize our algorithm, we have acquired a dataset of AMG signals produced by forearm muscles during typing. This dataset was manually filtered and classified, then six features were extracted using sliding window approach. Resulted uh, classified features were fed into neural network, which was then imported into Android application. This application acquired AMG signal in real time classified it and stored results in array. If number of occurrences for some gesture in this array exceeded certain threshold, we printed a symbol to the output. Now let's, uh, now let's talk about characteristics of our implementation. Here you can see a confusion matrix for, re uh, for recognition algorithm allowing to recognize five different tabs for extension uh, plus natural gesture. While these uh, values should be sufficient to recognize gesture, a filtering algorithm described above is applied. After a number of experiments, we had to kick out three keys from our gesture set. A problem that appeared to us is that finger extensions produce high number of intermediate states that are easily confused with other gestures in our set, so we had to delete them to improve reliability. We believe, however, that this problem can be fixed by utilizing different hardware, allowing to gather AMG signal from the palm itself, not from the forearm. Uh, one another pattern we found is that the impact of the noise produced by intermediate gesture uh, depends on the window size uh, that we use. After trying several window sizes, we found that during real-time operation, uh, neural networks, uh, which more successfully suppress intermediate gestures, perform better than those that uh, show greater accuracy in convolution matrix. Experiments showed that the best real-time accuracy is achieved with the window size of 80 samples. So we decided on gesture set of 6 Ks on the keyboard plus neutral state and window size of 80 samples. You can see confusion matrix for our neural network on the slide. As you can see, the worst recognition probability has a letter D. However, it does not drastically affect performance of our application because of filtering algorithm described above. To fix this problem, we set a low threshold for this case. After collecting and testing our data sets, we realized that our model was not able to re reliably classify the gesture inputs on another surface, most likely due to the fact that we collected our data sets using a laptop keyboard as our surface. When pressing on a key, an activation force is required for it to register, and this change in force was most likely reflected within our data sets. This can be compared to the activation energy in chemistry, where a minimum amount of energy is required to activate set reactants to create a product. Other surfaces do not present the same impediment in motion as the keyboard and therefore our model was not able to recognize them. We had not accounted for this characteristic when gathering our data set and therefore it would be an area of improvement within future iterations of our design. An alternative that could be implemented into our current data sets could be a comnet with batch normalization layers to regularize the model and in turn reduce overfitting. Here we have a screenshot of our application where each finger motion is mapped to its corresponding keyboard input. We have seven gestures total, including the, neural, in, including the neutral gesture. Here we will show a demonstration of our application.
To begin, we connected our Maya armband with our Android device through Bluetooth. In order to see that the device is working, we placed a vibrate function. Finally, our interface is ready. In our first demonstration, we showed a functionality of keys on a regular keyboard surface. In our second demonstration, we show its capability on an under-surface such as the couch. To conclude our work, we were able to develop an application that allows for a form of human-computer interaction of the Maya armband with an Android device. Our application was able to translate seven gestures into nine outputs given the shift functionality. And overall, typing with our interface was shown with the inclusion of a 600 millisecond latency attached to our threshold operations. Strengths of our project include the demonstration of translating natural typing motions into an interface, mobility of the interface, and a demonstration of an extra pool of gestures that can be universally implemented into both personal devices and IoT. Weaknesses of our model include the necessity to maintain low muscle noise. Given a noisy input, which can correlate to various arm movements, the output becomes less reliable. Additionally, due to latency and the need to reduce noise in the input, typing speeds cannot yet be comparable to that of typing on a physical keyboard. As stated earlier within our presentation, the Mayo armband requires a fixed location. This stringent requirement also makes it difficult to utilize the Mayo in different capacities. To conclude, there is definitely room for, there is definitely room for improvement with our application. Developing a filter al filtering algorithm will greatly help its intended use case by removing any consistent noise allowing for more flexibility when in a more ca casual environment. A position independent recognition algorithm could also be implemented such that there is more free range associated with where the Maya armband can be placed. Wider variety in this department could also supplement its usage in a casual environment. Trying different neural network architectures seen in previous works could be done to see which classifier works best with the differentiation for our gesture set potentially improving our application's accuracy. Within our design, the data sets were only gathered from the two of us. Due to our limited pool of participants, it could lead to overfitting. Therefore, it could be a great improvement to demonstrate its application across the general public. Gathering more data sets overall, along with a more diverse group of subjects, would alleviate questions within this category. Finally, the usage of stronger SMG signal collection hardware within our project. Recently, within the past couple months, a research group released a paper detailing their new SCMG armband that collects samples five times that of the Mayo armband and was overall a better method of gathering SCMG signal collection. While it is not commercially available at the moment, it demonstrates the possibility of upcoming hardware that could outperform the Mayo armband and improve our own application. Here is our work breakdown detailing how we split the project. And here are our references. Thank you for listening to our presentation.